everybody, welcome back to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be doing a do's and don'ts for drawing realistic fur. So I'm going to be going through some common mistakes that I see beginners make when they're trying to render realistic fur using graphite pencils. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go through the don'ts on the left hand side and then I'll be doing the do's and talking about my method for drawing fur on the right hand side. So firstly, let's go through some common mistakes. Like I said, I am using graphite pencils for both of these drawings. And so the first thing that I did was I just drew two circles and I'm going to fill them in with the fur texture. So the first common mistake that I see a lot of beginners make when they're trying to draw fur, and in particular when they're trying to cover a large area with fur, so for example, a certain animal's body, is that they just do this back and forth motion. And this gives the fur a very rigid look. It's not very flowy, it hasn't got a natural curve to it, it's just back and forth and it's very uniform looking. And like I said, this video is aimed for people that are trying to get that realistic look. So another thing is that when they go to add in shadows, again, that they're doing that same back and forth motion, which gives you these stop and start points. But it also means that because they're rigid and they're just back and forth, it doesn't really give any depth or dimension to the piece. So I can't really tell where the shadows are meant to be. I can't see the different layers of fur and it just doesn't look 3D and you can't really tell that it's meant to be fur. And in particular, I feel people do this because they get a bit kind of tired of doing a large area of fur and they just want to get it done. And especially if you're doing an animal's body, they'll put a lot of time into the face and kind of rush through the body. And so this kind of technique comes out a bit more when you're doing a large area and you just want to go back and forth and shade it all in. But I really recommend spending some extra time making sure that you're looking at the different clumps of fur and the way that they're flowing and the curve to them. A few other mistakes that I see people make is firstly using their finger to blend or not blending at all. So the problem with using your finger to blend is that you might have a lot of grease or oils on your fingers and this can transfer onto the paper and one it makes it less archival so it can discolour the paper over time and it also means that in certain areas where you're putting more oil onto the paper it can give more of a dark patchy look. But anyway, those are some common mistakes and now I'm going to go through the method that I like to use to draw fur and I'll also be talking about some more mistakes as well. So the first thing that I like to do is I always like to use a reference photo. If you're trying to draw realistically, then you need to be using a reference photo to see how the fur layers, to see the direction that it goes in and the way it flows and how the layers are built up. It's also important to see like any little flyaway bits of fur and how it overlaps each other. So the first thing that I like to do is firstly use a much lighter grade of pencil. So with the don't drawing, I used a B grade pencil straight away and I used that same grade pencil throughout the whole of that drawing. And really what you need to do is have a few different grades of pencil. So I like to start up with a lighter pencil, so I use the 2H. And this allows me to get those lighter tones and also to get more detail because it's a harder pencil. And so I start off really lightly just to establish all of my individual structures. So what I do is I get the reference photo and I look at the key parts. So I look for the key clumps of fur. And I'm first trying to block in all of the shadows. So I use a bit more pressure and a bit more shading just to indicate where those darkest shadows are. So I know where the darkest parts are. And then I like to also just kind of give direction to the fur. So I shade in those areas and the direction that they're going in. But what's important is that I don't use that back and forth motion, I just kind of sweep the pencil down and create little pencil strokes smoothly without going back and forth. Then what I like to do is once I've done a layer throughout the whole of the piece of fur that I'm working on, is I like to go in with a cotton bud, which I love to use to blend graphite. It gives a really smooth finish and it takes away all of the graininess. And I like to just sweep that over the whole area. And again, I'm going in the direction that the fur goes in. And I just like to soften everything out. And again, this really helps to kind of give a tone to the whole of the area so there's no white bits, but it also means that it's smoothing everything out. So next, as you can see, I'm going in with a darker grade pencil. So I went in with the B grade pencil now, which is the same pencil I used for the other drawing. So I used the 2H first for the lighter areas, and now I'm building up to those darker shadows. I don't like to go in too dark first because if you make a mistake, it's harder to erase. So what I'm doing now is I'm going over those shadowed areas. Remember, we've already established them with the 2H pencil. So it's just the case of going over them and darkening them up. So this helps to give 
like a variety within the shadows so you can leave certain shadows where it's just got that 2H but now for the ones that need to be darker I go in with this pencil again the most important thing is to look at the direction that the fur is going in as you can see with this patch of fur each area is going in lots of different directions it's not just one direction throughout so you really need to look at the direction of the fur and kind of indicate where it's changing rather than just doing it all in one direction and again you can see that my pencil strokes aren't straight they're curving in different directions like the fur curves around the body of the animal and so it's important to look at how that fur is curving around the contours of the face or the body of the animal and to do this again you'll need to study lots of reference photos the key to realism is always using a reference photo because it's hard to imagine all of that detail so i'm just slowly building it up remember i don't want to apply a lot of pressure onto this pencil because then it will be hard to erase and lift up highlights if you need to go a bit darker then you can change to a darker grade pencil but i don't like to really burnish the pencil into the paper if you burnish graphite into the paper, it also means that you're likely to get a lot more shine, which is something that I really don't like. So I try to avoid putting lots of pressure onto the pencil. So I'm just working throughout. I'm not going back and forth. I'm just tapering my pencil strokes. As you can see, I'm kind of transitioning some pencil strokes between the shadowed areas into the highlights. So it's not just really obvious where the highlights are going to be and where the shadows are. I like to create some mid-toned areas as well. So as you can see, I have left some areas lighter because I'm just adding this pencil to where the shadows are. So that naturally gives us the look of where the highlights should be because you're not adding the pencil to them. You're not darkening up those areas. But we can lift up some more of the highlights in a minute with a kneaded eraser. So now I'm going in for a second time with that cotton bud and what I'm doing is I'm just smoothing everything out again. Again, it darkens up the whole area, not just those areas where we've applied the pencil. And now I'm going in with an even darker pencil. So this was the free B and I'm just using this on the darkest parts. And you can see how building up the pencil over time and not just going in straight away, adding lots of dark shadow means that we're getting much more of a realistic look. And again, it's just about patience and really taking your time with this. Realism is a really slow thing to do because you've got to concentrate so much on the kind of detail and making sure everything's accurate, making sure that the contrast is right and making sure that all of the highlights and shadows are in the right place. So if you want to do realism, you've got to remember it's not something that is going to be really, really quick. So for comparison, the do side took me about an hour to do I'd say and the don't version took me a couple of minutes and that is one of the key things to transition from doing the don't side where it's really unrealistic to being able to do something more realistic and that's just simply investing more time into your drawing don't try to rush through the process really enjoy the method and the process of drawing it I like to take a small patch of fur at a time rather than try to render a whole area in one go because if you just focus on a small area, then you can render that area and move on. But if you know that you've got to fill a whole area and you start the whole area, then it's a lot more kind of easier to rush through it and want to just get it all done in one night and one sitting. So as you can see, I'm really building up the shadow on certain areas. I even used a 6B pencil on the really, really dark areas, but you can just use the 3B pencil. If it ever gets a bit grainy, I like to go in with that cotton bud and just smooth it out over those bits that are looking grainy. And it gives a nice soft finish because fur doesn't really have a grainy look to it. So now I'm going in with a kneaded eraser and I just like squeeze that kneaded eraser to get the point that I wanted, which is a nice kind of edge to it. And then I'm just using that to pull up some lighter areas. So what I like to do is I like to look at my drawing and look at the reference photo and any bits that need to be lighter, I just go in with this kneaded eraser and I just lift up. And that's one thing that's really great about using graphite is that it does lift up really well. And that's one thing that I didn't do in the don't version is that I didn't lift up any highlights. It wouldn't have really worked anyway because there wasn't any real blending. So there's areas that were just white anyway in the don't version, which is why you should blend. But as you can see, it really does look effective now when I add the highlights 
on the do side because we've already got a tone over the whole area. I also like to use the kneaded eraser to pull up some like flyaway bits of fur so some fur that overlaps other kind of clumps of fur and this gives a more natural look and it helps just break all of the different clumps up and make it look less uniformed. So the techniques for drawing fur are very similar to the techniques for drawing hair and I have actually got another do's and don'ts video dedicated to drawing hair so if you want to check that out I'll link that up above because they are very similar methods and they are similar techniques. And I know drawing hair is something that people find the most frustrating when they're trying to do a portrait so if you want to check that out I will link that up above. So now I'm just kind of doing all of the details. So any areas that need to be darker, I'm just going and adding more of those 3B and 6B pencils. And then any areas that I wanna lighten up, I'm going in with the kneaded eraser. But that is pretty much it for this tutorial. Remember to look at the direction the fur is going in and also to look at the contrast. Anyway, if you're new to my channel and you enjoyed this video, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified on my future videos. If you want to learn even more about drawing fur, animals, portraits and all of that sort of stuff, then check out my Patreon where I've got real time videos for you guys so you can follow along with me. But that's it for this tutorial. Let me know what other videos you'd like to see from me and I will see you in my next video. Bye everyone.